Hi there, my dear friends, and welcome to another stoic meditation. The principal idea of these videos is to help you meditate with the psychological and philosophical um, utility of meditation, where you're grounded in the present and free of anxiety or worry of the future or past or lingering thoughts. But the spin that this channel has on this concept is that we utilize some principles of stoic philosophy and we implement them during the meditation. So while you are grounded and in the present, you can have a deep think about your life, about how you conduct yourself, how you are as a person, and possibly even make some improvements. The main fundamental idea in cognitive behavioral therapy is cultivating a second mind, which has the ability to step aside from its usual emotions and ideas and habits and view it and see if there are ways that you can make changes to be better in the future. And that's the goal of these meditations. Okay, now, today, we are talking about how to choose your life pathway. It's quite a complicated topic for today's video, and you can interpret this in many ways, but specifically what I'm talking about is your personal aspirations for what you want to do, and your career aspirations. So we're getting really practically focused here. Now, you can adopt and use the information that I'm going to tell you in this video, of course, for whatever purpose suits you best, but I'm tailoring it to these two things specifically with examples, just so you can attain a higher level of understanding. Um, I think some people might think that this idea is perhaps a very non-philosophical one for a meditation, but I tend to quite dramatically disagree. Um, philosophy, especially practical philosophies, are the investigation of how to best live and understand and think about your life and your surrounding universe. Now, since so much of the human experience is to do with your goals and goal settings, what you do in your personal time, your aspirations, and your career, it's fundamentally important to your experience being a human that you try your best to get these things right. So, I do think that choosing your career is very philosophical because it comes down to the fundamental values that you hold as a person and what you want for yourself. Now, I'd like to invite you first, before we dive into the meditation, to get comfortable. Um, it's best if you are meditating, if you're thinking deeply, to adopt a position with a neutral spine, something ergonomic, where you're not going to start moving again and have a strained muscle, nor will you have any tickling, distracting pains or discomforts by being in an unsupportive position. So, you may be kneeling, you may be sitting with a straight back, Maybe sitting upright in a chair or lying flat on your back. But just make sure that it's somewhere that you can adopt a position to think for a possibly prolonged period of time. Okay, and while you're there, I'd like to help you ground yourself in the present moment. The way the human brain works is we have, of course, as you'll know, constant thoughts which take you down trails. I'll be, you know, leading you through a meditation, and then I'll have a thought. 
I have to do this later today. And it'll pull me away from the present moment and it'll lead me down a spiral. You can't eradicate intrusive uh, small thoughts like that. Then that's not the purpose of meditation. The purpose of meditation is to see it and say, okay, I'm not going to follow this thought, but I'm going to let it pass. Okay. And come back to the present moment. But what do you actually think about in the present moment? That's what you do in meditation practically is you do breathing exercises or you think or feel about something specific or you know you hear the people saying um and it's because they're focusing on that for some people there is a spiritual side but in practicality that's what it is to be mindful that is mindfulness is just concentrating on and thinking about the physical present stimuluses you are experiencing as a physical being that's what it is it's multimodal um, so it doesn't only have to be one thing and it doesn't only have to be one sense it doesn't only have to be breathing hearing anything like that it can be my voice it can be the breathing through your nose it can be the sense of pressure that you feel when lying against the bed or chair or standing now just quickly we start at the top of your scalp can you feel any possible sensations at the top of your scalp where your hair or possibly lack thereof is coming further down to the forehead do you have any tension in your eyebrows or do you have any built-up tension in your temples it's this sort of practice which will allow you to stay in the present and think about different things and if you want a further tip for falling asleep this can be called progressive muscle relaxation some people choose to flex and then gently release the muscle before moving on to the next and others don't mind and that's a specific way to keep your mind in the present to help you fall asleep because mostly we find that your brain falls asleep when entering into a dream state when thinking about something non-troublesome or when in the present moment now moving down to your mouth and your nose and your ears unflexing any tension feeling any stimulus is there an air temperature you can feel in your face or is there any sort of input that your nerve receptors are getting or your neck have you strained it isn't it a bad position from your posture how is your throat your shoulders are they uptight are they relaxed what position are they in are they hunched forwards or possibly though more rarely too far back your abdominal muscles your oblique muscles your transverse abdominus the muscle underneath your lower abs your lower back the end points of your transverse abdominus your glutes, your thighs, can you feel pressure? If you're sitting, can you feel pressure on your legs? Or what can you feel? Perhaps the most notable sensation you are experiencing right now is something that I have not isolated. Perhaps there is a glaring and annoying noise. As annoying as it may be to hear, it may ground you in the present to observe the sound and that's being mindful I hope this has helped ground you in the present now the good thing about mindfulness is this is a practice which of course helps you be free of stress and anxiety in the moment but learning to do this actually helps you throughout the day as people find and studies have shown that a brain that adapts to do this will throughout the day 
start automatically doing it in situations instead of pursuing negative or worrisome thought lines they understand and see the present moment and being in the present allows you of course being in a, the present with a friend will make you a better friend more interesting in conversation more effective in your current work um, and so bringing some mindfulness to your life is always a good idea now let me get my notes up for today's slightly more complicated meditation yet yeah, we as i said before are diving into a more complicated topic of life purpose of career aspiration and personal aspiration the things that you want to achieve or rather the things that you want to be as what you are is much more important than what you do as the measure of your worth of course comes from how much of a good person you are and how much of a good person you are isn't necessarily by the deeds which you are able to do as that could be limited by circumstance but rather your intentions there is that old parable where a rich man comes in um to a m- mosque or a church or a temple and pays a hefty amount of coin to the temple and an old lady a very poor old lady comes in and only pays one coin and the rich man scoffs at her but in the end she has given a higher percentage of her wealth and thus it's not how many coins but rather it's you it's how much you're giving and what you're doing and what your intentions are now to be able to consider such things as the purpose of your life you have to isolate philosophical principles such as your values so if this is an exercise you've never done before it may be more difficult or time consuming if you haven't purposefully sat down and thought what are my actual personal values that i want for my life what do i value in a human being what does it mean to be a good human a good individual and how do i assess these things well of course there are many ways that you could go about answering these questions but in the end that is no one's job to do but you so with that in mind let's continue now i'm going to guide you through some steps so you don't need to feel like you have to pause the video and go and google some in depth personal philosophy or religion or spirituality because that's the sort of research that you can do in your own time which can inform your personal beliefs and values to a further extent but this is going to be fairly surface level just to help guide you so this shouldn't interfere with any basic um political religious spiritual or personal values you've already set up now the first question is practical just as the rest what are your roles and responsibilities as the person whom you are given your family your age bracket your role as a citizen in your society or a member of whatever groups you are a part of how many can you isolate and what roles and responsibilities do they bring surely to be a good citizen or a good friend a good boyfriend or husband a good wife will entail a few things which come to your mind fairly quickly i'm not going to insinuate what they are but i think you yourself know what they are 
Furthermore, what do you define a good person as? Or, what do you define the person to be who you would aspire to be? E.g., you can separate those two things. What's the person you'd want to be? Maybe an empathetic, a strong person, efficient or hardworking. But they're all very loose. They're not very practical. Those are nice things to aspire by, but you need to gauge it in the real world. So, who would you aspire to be? You don't need to aspire to be someone in a varying circumstance. Aspire to be yourself. Given the best possible variables you can have to fulfill your roles and responsibilities for the things that you value. How can you best be your best partner, your best son or daughter, your best boyfriend or girlfriend, citizen, your best sporting club member, your best reading club member, your best student? What can you do to be your best self in the most important things you are involved in in your life? And that is the person you aspire to be. Unless you aspire to be in different circumstances. But then again, the fundamentals of empathy and kindness will stay with you. As it's not your circumstance, but rather the personality behind it. But for practicality, we must define your roles and responsibilities so you know what you are striving for. Now we move on. What natural qualities do you have which will allow you to be this person effectively? What can you emphasize to be a better citizen or a better friend or more empathetic? A more empathetic citizen who cares more about their fellow people. What qualities do you have? And furthermore, what do you not have that you wish to cultivate? Personalities can change. There are things which are hardwired, but you can make new wiring. Neural plasticity allows for new connections in the brain which can change you over time. Neurons that fire together, wire together. Now, with the formula of your roles, your responsibilities, your skills, your strengths, what you need to work on, what you value, I'd like to invite you to come up with a sentence or a short paragraph with a summation of how you should be spending your life. I don't only want you to remember the, you know, weight-bearing aspects, but also to be a good individual. Remember that there are aspects that you have to keep for yourself, such as to be a good citizen, you must be productive, and to be productive, you need to have purposeful downtime and leisure. So, when you're in leisure, in a leisure that you value and have chosen, you can stop in the moment and think, this is something which does go towards my life's goals. Now, before you come up with that sentence or short paragraph, I'm going to read you a summation of mine. It's actually not mine, but um, I have taken my personal one, my personal life aspiration, and modified it to remove any identifying uh, or very, very deeply personal things. And so this is more of the tune of how mine is uh, at least semantically laid out. You can uh, just hear mine as inspiration. So, I will utilize my time to acquire 
strength, both physically and mentally, to give me the ability to be the best and most moral individual possible. I will cultivate this strength with a purpose to be able to put others' needs before my own. Something short like that should suffice. Um, and then you think, how does this apply when you spend your time and career in what you choose? I know that I personally want to be a 3D animator specializing in 3D modeling. And therefore, how can I best and most efficiently learn the skill, the art, to be able to live a moral and practically ethical life? So, how can I use the position that I get as a modeler to influence culture or to possibly gain finances which I spend in a moral and ethical way or to change um, people in my workplace or their environment in a way in which I think betters humanity. Now, after you hear those examples, what is your aspiration? I'll take you through a short segment where I do some deep breathing exercises and you can have a think and then I'll give you a little bit of a closing statement about remembering this during your day. Okay. Okay, now you've had a think about what you want to do with your life. If you don't know what specific career you wish to dive into, maybe have a little bit of a think about your personal interests and your values and how you think that you can mash them to glide together into a productive way to spend your time. Now, when you're going throughout your day, I find this practice very useful. Um, in the Bible, um, it says that I think their philosophy will be written on their foreheads or stamped on their foreheads in um, the early Bible. And that was uh, to say that they'd constantly be thinking about their philosophical values. Um, and I'm pretty sure I was reading in the Quran and there is a similar metaphor used but I can't exactly explain it and furthermore Epictetus says that you should always keep your philosophy at hand it's a constant throughout religious and spiritual and practical philosophy even psychology to try to constantly remind yourself of what you value and what you want to spend your time doing as it's very easy to spend your time doing something you regret if it's not on your mind to do what you ought so in the moment I invite you at any moment e.g. you're doing leisure you're having food you're working you're doing something in your spare time have a stop as frequently as you can and think how does this relate to my life goal that I've set up how does this help me become a better person how does this increase my strength and ability to sacrifice myself for others 
How does this increase my aspiration that I wish to live? Is this leisure time really helpful and really rejuvenating me? Or is this a waste of time? Should I be doing a better, different piece of leisure than this? Or is this work really not worth my time? Now, think of that and maybe also think if I were to die tomorrow or right now, would this be something that I missed? Is this something that I think is worth in my life or something that I would look back at the end of my life and regret doing and wish I was spending my time doing something else? I hope that this has been an interesting exercise, if that at least, or maybe it's even helped you learn or think of something. And if this has helped you solidify your aspirations or goal, or maybe even given you a possible cause for more motivation by giving you that little paragraph about your life, please tell me. I would love to hear it. Thank you so much for watching another video. Goodbye.